an open heaven is the unhindered manifestation of all that heaven is. Under an open heaven, natural laws are superseded by the power of God as divinity interrupts uh, humanity. Poverty, sickness, and disease, uh, human degradation uh, are driven back by the power of God. I don't know who I'm preaching to today, but the work of your hands shall be blessed. I break the spirit of poverty. I break the spirit of begging and borrowing. I take authority over that spirit that has held you down and told you are never rising. I stand as a man of God to say, the work of your hands is blessed. Whatever you do is blessed. I break the spirit of laziness. You are not broke. You are not lazy. You are ahead and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. And the heavens are open over your head. Lift up your voice and give God a praise for 30 seconds. Don't let what you've done hinder you. Hinder you. Don't you let where you've been hinder you. Don't let what they've said hinder you. Hinder you. Don't you let your past hinder you. You're welcome to Woman Without Limits. I'm Reverend Kathy Kuna, and I'm delighted that you could tune in tonight. I know you're in for an awesome time. It's been amazing. It's been so awesome even to just get your feedback to let us know how we truly are affecting your lives because Woman Without Limits is all about changing lives, transforming lives, bringing a revolution over your life. You cannot remain the same again. The reason why we bring diverse stories is for you to also know that you can put yourself in there and know that you're not alone. It's not how you start. It's how you end a matter that really, really matters. This is Woman Without Limits. Tonight we have an amazing guest. Her name is Rena Hicks. She is so, so amazing. She's written a book on Money Wise. I tell you, this girl deals with finance really well. Tells you how to use it and how to really have a beautiful relationship with your money. She is also an operations and HR director at FIDA Investment Bank. Rina joined FIDA in 2003. She holds an MBA degree from Strathmore Business School. She also has a bachelor's of business degree uh, majoring in finance and marketing uh, from Edith Cohen University in Perth, Australia. I know that she will absolutely bless you where your finances are concerned. Give it up for Rina. Hi, hey, Rina. Hi. Are you? Very well. You're looking nice. Yes. How are you? Good. You're very welcome. Thank you. Yes, it's so good to have you on Woman Without Limits. It's such a pleasure to be here. I yeah. watch you every Sunday. You do, mm. eh? <laughs> and sometimes I even have your mother. Oh, yeah? I didn't watch her. When, did, when was she here? A while ago. It's been a while. Yeah, it's been a okay, while. Okay. Been a, you watch YouTube. Yes, you will I find her there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. It's wonderful to see you. Happy, I, I'll tell you her mother later on. I'm sure you're like, who is her mother? Um, <laughs> I can see the faces. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, but Rina, it's so good to have you, and uh, Woman Without Limits, uh, I know you will be such a blessing. I really, think yeah. I really. Yeah, you know, so we start from who Rina is, because okay. all these people are looking at me like, oh, okay, you seem to know her, <laughs> and you know I do, yeah. but who is Rina? Okay, mm -hmm. wow, um, Rina is a mother, <laughs> I'll start there, um, a mother of three, a wife, um, who is passionate know, about? Look at them, but <laughs> mm, yeah. Who's passionate? Unbelievable, eh? She looks like a kid, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, who's passionate about um, helping people become financially literate. I have a dream that Africans will find their own solutions for the challenges that we go through and that we'll stop looking to others to help solve our problems and simply just, you know, grow our wealth and preserve it in a way that will help our generations to come. And that's my goal and my wow. desire. Mm. Wow. So that's where you're headed. Yes. That's to where make I'm sure headed. that we are empowered financially. Yes. To know yes. how to deal with it relationally even. Yes. And wow. stop sticking our heads in the sand when we hear money. It's not a hard, difficult, boring subject. It's a wonderful, fun, um, and easy subject that we can unpack easily. Really? Yeah. Money. Yes. You will unpack it for us. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Let's just reverse and, 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 sure. and, and talk about like uh, your background, like, okay. uh, you know, growing up. Do yeah. you have uh, siblings? And oh, yes, mm. I do. Um, I'm the first one of three children. I have a sister and a brother who are two years younger than me and they're twins. So we grew up very close. As, oh, they're two years younger? Yes, they're two years younger. Okay. You probably thought they were older. Like, no, <laughs> they look older than you. <laughs> Shiro, I'm sorry. But <laughs> You oh know, gosh, yeah. 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 Okay. So how was that growing so up? So that twins? was, yeah, that was very challenging. To be honest with you, um, I grew up. Um, I, I remember the. F I always felt like a third leg. Um, they always had these jokes. You know, one would start and the other finishes, and they laugh because it was an experience they had in class, or you know, they did everything together. And so I always felt out of this Place. little party. Yeah. So I, I, I don't know. So it kind of made me a loner. And I remember that's one of the struggles that I had when <laughs> I as was a, a teenager. Child. Yeah, as a teenager, I just wanted to be alone. I felt, you know, I don't fit in. I, I, don't, I don't quite fit in. I, I, so for some wow. reason, I don't know why, but I guess it started from when they appeared in my life. I was two years old. I remember my mom told me that one time they were crying so much and they were both in a Moses basket. I walked into her room and I literally toppled the Moses basket over thinking, what are these things you brought into my world? <laughs> And what to are just they interrupt for? my fun. And you turned them for? around. Yeah. <laughs> and they toppled over. Fortunately, they were on the bed, so I guess they rolled over on the bed. <laughs> but I love them to beat them. Yeah. yeah, they're my wonderful, wonderful friends. Oh, but that's how you felt. That's how I felt. I always felt like a third leg. Right. Out of place, don't fit in. From home to school to uh, socially even, for some reason. Really? Initially, yeah. And so that affected your relationships? I'd say I, I approached, and even still now, have to consciously work at my relationships. Um, I can go for years without talking to people who I call my close friends. Um, imagine, I'm, I'm, uh, yeah. For I know, years. Look at me like, like, for real, I have to consciously work on my relationships. It's a weakness I have. I have to consciously... Um, like, please call. Yeah, like I have to, oh yeah, I have to call, and I have to, you know... I don't know why. Really? Mm. And it's not like you don't love them, it's just... I love them to bits. And I do care about them, so I'll send an email, or I'll send them an SMS. But in terms of finding time to spend time with them physically, it's something I have to consciously work on. Seriously? Wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and did that affect your boyfriend issues as a teenager? No. So I'm a one-on-one -on -one person. I, 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 I like to... You know, when I relate with somebody, I like to relate one on one and go really deep. Um, and so, the friends that I have, the handful of friends that I have, we are really close. Um, and so, with boyfriend, I didn't have many. I, I wasn't the kind that went around having many boyfriends. Again, because of that nature. Um, I mean, from recollection, I had one in high school, I think, for like six months, and then it didn't work out. And then went to university, had one, and then I had my husband. Seriously. Mm. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And then okay, you, you then left and went to, to Perth. So yes, yeah, so I yeah, I grew up in Nairobi, went to high school here, and the time came for me to go to Perth. And I guess that's where my story begins. Okay. Because when I went to Perth and I, I really wanted to go to university abroad because I wanted to experience more than just what I knew. And so my parents were like, sure, that's not a problem. But as you would very well know, by the time my, my mom was 23, she had three children. 23? Yeah, so they were quite young when it came time for me to go to university. Yeah. And school fees for uni abroad is not cheap. And so they, we made a deal. And the deal was, Rina, you go to university, no problem. We, we, we will meet your tuition costs. However, 
for your living expenses, we're gonna give you money for six months for your living expenses. After the six months, you will have to find a job within the six months that will sustain you beyond those six months and the money that we're going to give you when you go to university. And I thought to myself, that's easy enough. I mean, that's something I can it's do. It's doable. Please, yeah. Right. I mean, I'm a toughie. Yeah. So I left and I went to school. I remember, I, I will always remember this. My dad took me and, I, and I, I'm really so grateful for, for him having, you know, taken... I mean, when I look back now that I'm a grown-up, I'm like, that was a huge sacrifice. You know, it's expensive to travel so far away. You know, Australia Oh, he took far. you all the way? He did. Wow. You know, he took me all the way, stayed with me, settled me down, and then came back. Anyway, so when I got there, um, so first of all, a bit of, just to step back a little bit, my, my parents didn't have a house help around when we were older. So, in, you know, when we were older, like in high school and things like that, they just had somebody to come and clean and iron. But everything else, as kids, we did. However, I got away with murder because my, my brother and sister cooked. I hated cooking. So I used to clean dishes and do everything else, but I hated cooking. So fast forward to go to university, and I don't like cooking at this point in time. I decided by this year, I have money. I'll go and buy, you know, McDonald's and eat, eat out. So I literally ate out for most of those six months. By the time it was coming to the end of those six months, I had not gotten a job. I had no job. Not saved. I have not saved. What is that? <laughs> I had not saved. I mean, what is, what is saving to a 19-year-old? Yeah. And I was like, you know, uh, my money is running out. And it actually did run out. I don't know. There's, there's some people, I'm one of those some people, have a tendency of somewhere, somehow, God will send... An angel. An angel to rescue Quan, what me. What do these angels do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they'll rescue Somehow. me. Somehow. Imagine, yeah, it, it will, will work. work out. Yeah, it will work. And so I didn't plan. And so what happened was, I ended up with $3 in my account, not even enough to withdraw, and I had no food. And so for the next two weeks, I was like, I need a plan. What am I going to do? And I used to go to my friends' houses. So I lived in student housing, and so I'd go to different friends' houses or units to go and ask them actually the homework was <laughs> uh, and then i stay long enough to dinner time then we eat together and half my friends were asians you know from china singapore and they cooked really good yeah. meals right and right. they loved to cook they enjoyed cooking so i'd hang actually how did you make that mashed potato it will show me yeah. hmm? so we make mashed potato together you and i had eat. a wonderful swiss yeah friend and <laughs> everywhere <laughs> clever girl so it was two weeks now and i'd done this all these two weeks so and now it got to a point now hunger. now it was a point it was too much <laughs> and and i couldn't do it anymore and so this one day i woke up couldn't have breakfast because i had nothing i like literally had nothing it was lunchtime and i couldn't have lunch because i had no money and i hadn't bought any groceries it was dinner time and i went to my kitchen there was nothing and i was like you know what just had a glass of water and went to bed I tried to sleep. I don't know if anyone here has ever tried sleeping hungry. You can't. <laughs> yeah. I could not sleep. I woke up, walked to the kitchen. I opened the cupboard, mine, because I lived with six other people, and I just had a tin of coffee. So I was like, now what am I going to do? So I opened the tin. I poured um, you know, water in a, in a mug, made myself a cup of coffee, black, and I just sipped it and started thinking about life. And as I was doing that, I remember I was standing. My eyes kind of just moved over to the bin. And I looked into the bin and I saw an over toasted slice of bread inside the dustbin. I looked at it and I thought, Jesus is Lord. He has <laughs> given me something <laughs> I can eat. Anyway, long story short, I picked it up, took a uh, bread knife and scraped off eh? the burnt part. The burnt part on both sides. It was burnt, eh? Scraped off, scraped off, and I ate it. And I slept. Rina, are you serious? I'm telling you, I ate from, from the bin. dustbin. Do you know a dustbin? You know you somebody has cooked, I don't know what. It's not like a nice dustbin. And it doesn't normally smell <sighs> nice. Anyway, I'm sorry. <laughs> so you <laughs> I ate and um, wow. after that is when I was like, you know what? This is insane. I mean, I cried. Because I felt like a chokora of the worst level. Because right. it's not that I didn't have. It's that I didn't plan. And it has come to the end of the period that we had agreed upon. I didn't have a job, you know. I didn't have anything to show for it and I had not saved to be able to get, to help me move on with what our agreement was. Anyway, so to help me, to rescue me from that situation, I called my mom. <laughs> and my mom, I've messed up and please help me. I just need, you know, whatever amount, I'll find myself a job. And so she rescued me. But that moment of the bin 
changed my life. And I said to myself, it doesn't matter what life throws at me. I'm never ending up here again. Wow. Yeah. Wow. 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 Yeah. So it had to go to the dustbin for you to wake up. Yep. I guess it did. And see, girl, things can go wrong. Yeah. So you decided, no, never again. Never again. And then just understanding that everything has to be intentional. It, it can't, you can't just fall down and be wealthy. Yeah. Per you chance. Can't, it it's cannot not happen. It's not per adventure. Mm -mm. Yeah. It is a process. It requires a lot of hard work. It requires diligence. Pastor Kathy, what time do you sleep? Very late. What time do you wake up? Very early. You know, people look at you. People look at you and see the success. Yes. But they don't see the work that you have to put in to be that successful. I was telling somebody just now, if people think pastors don't have work, they need to be pastors. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. To if you discover, think of, it's, I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah. If I give you the story of my day, it's... Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so I think for me it was also just discovering, and over time I've also learned when when I've been in a hard situation because I mean it hasn't been at a smooth sailing from then. I mean, for example, last year was very challenging from a business perspective, and I remember towards the end of the year, about October or so, just wondering and just praying and asking God, has He any? You know, all these people who said they're going to do these things or invest this and, you know, these projects that I was expecting, right. I held back. We had elections for like the whole year. Um, what, what's all this? You yeah. know, I had plans. Yeah. And I remember just somebody saying to me that you may be having a challenging, a challenging situation financially, but there are people thriving. And I remember reading and God just kind of speaking through what I read that what God is looking for is a good manager of his resources. Wow. And if you are a good manager with what he has given you, you know, money is a currency. It flows like a river. Wow. And if you don't have a way of keeping it and making it grow, it will keep flowing. It will flow to someone else and it will disappear. Flow to Pastor Kathy, who seems to be impacting people's Amen. lives. Amen. And changing. It will mm. flow to so and so. And it doesn't matter. It's not about God didn't create poor people and rich people. Do you know that? I know. He didn't. I know. He created know. you. And do you know, in fact, in Genesis 2 4, it says that the earth had nothing, void. It was void. Right. And there was no plant. Was there a plant? No. Why? It, God did not send rain. Why did God not send rain? Because he had not yet created Me. man. Me. And Human he being. waited to create man so that he can now send rain. And then crops can grow because there will be somebody to do what? The bad, you are Jesus is still. Yes. So God has something for each of us. But unless you're a good manager with that house you live in, with those uh, resources God has given you, oh, with the time that you somebody. have. Wow. 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 He will hold back. He'll hold back. He will hold back. So you back. have to be a good manager to work with God. You know God is, is a businessman. And so I love what you're saying. Yeah. Because if you can show him, yes, we can work together in finance. Absolutely. He will he'll give you a lot. Absolutely. So that you can work together for the sake of the kingdom. Yeah. Okay, so here you are, Rina. Let's now fast forward. You're sure. from school. Mm -hmm. We're coming back to finances so that you tell us how to manage and what to do with sure. our money. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so fast forward now. You've come back yeah. uh, to Kenya. Yeah. And now you're working here. Yeah. Uh -huh. So even the coming back was dramatic. Okay, so do I tell that story? Yes, please. That's what I So need. I finished my undergrad mm. and... When I finished, I was like, oh, Australia is such a beautiful country. There's so many opportunities. It was a challenging time. It was when we were going through, uh, people will tell my age now, we're going through a transition from multi-party um, to, I mean, from a single party to a multi-party state. Yeah. And it was a terrible time. And I was like, what am I going home to do? Like, really, what am I going home to do? And I decided, maybe I shouldn't go home. And then I felt, no, I need to go home. And then I was so torn, and I decided, you know what, let me just stay. And I chose a course that was related to what I do, but I wouldn't really enjoy it. I just thought, let me just do a master's in accounting, which is not me. But I thought I need to do it because it will get me points to be able to, you know, get me a job, work here, and so on and so forth. Anyway, so I registered for class, and this Sunday, I was not feeling like going to church. I used to go to church in the evenings, so, you know, at six o'clock. And this friend of mine called and said, I'm coming to pick you up, to, let's go to church. And I said, mm -mm, I'm not in the mood today. He said, what? I'm coming to pick you up, we're going to church. So came, called me out, I entered his car, and we went to church. 
So by the time I dragged my feet and we got there, it was after praise and worship had started. I used to go to a little church. So we enter and it was, for some reason in the West, when it's praise and worship, especially for evening services, they like to keep the lighting in the audience. The ambience. Yeah. Yeah. And then the stage has all this beautiful lighting and so you kind of get into it. Yeah. Anyway, I don't even know I'm giving all these details. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> so I walked in, I slipped into the back and the pastor you know, said, oh, let's just let the Holy Spirit kind of just um, move. minister to us and right. let the Holy Spirit move. And we could, I was like, no, surely, okay, so whatever. I was so tired, I was so not into it. And then he said, um, I just want to ask, is Rina in the audience? Hey, 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 yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, did he say my name? I mean, it was a small church, so he knew me, but you know, I, I wasn't going to church. He hadn't seen me. And he said, if Rina is in the congregation, could you please come forward? I was like, Jesus. And I went in front and he said, by the way, I just feel that I need to pray for you. And we just need to pray. And he started praying and he prayed. He called his wife and asked, please lay hands on her and let's just start praying. And when they prayed, he said, he sees that I am meant to go back home. You are meant to go back home. I see you speaking to thousands and thousands of young people. They are not in a church. You're not a pastor, but you need to go back home. And I was like, Ay -ya. I've already registered. I'm starting tomorrow yeah. my accounting class. You know, I started crying, weeping, because it had been a month of me talking to my mentor back home. I don't yeah. know what to do. Talking to my mom, I don't know what to do. And they're like, no, just whatever you decide will support you. Sometimes that answer, it's not very nice, eh? Yes. Just do whatever will support whatever you. Choose, yeah. <laughs> you kind of want direction, yeah. you know? Anyway, the direction came, and so I came back home. And when I came back home, I kind of just uh, looked for a job. I went into the IT field. I didn't go straight into finance. And it was through my first job working in an, in an IT e-commerce space um, when I discovered my passion. I did some work for Old Mutual. And my boss at the time, uh, who was Paul Kukubo, um, told me um, that because I had a finance background, he wanted me to understand the client and help the staff understand this client so that then when we come up with a solution, it makes sense. Oh my gosh, I had so much fun doing no fun. it. Oh my gosh, I had so much fun. And that job just lit something in me. And I was like, this is what I want to do. And a couple of other things happened. And then I decided to quit my job and I went into theater. Yeah, I was a choreographer for a while, discovering myself. Yes. Um, and then decided I want to work in the finance field. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So eventually you landed there. Yes. So now, okay, then you get married. So then I got married. Mm -hmm. And then, um, this is many, many, many years after I, somebody, you know, said to me, um, you speak a lot to people. Because I guess what would happen is I'm at my job, I'm advising people what shares to buy, but I'd spend so much time. The other colleagues who used to be in customer service would look at me like, yeah, please, can you hurry up? We have a queue of people waiting. And it can't be you're handling somebody for 30 minutes or, or more, you know? But I was so passionate about, you know, just helping people know how do you value a company? What do you look for when you're trying to decide what company to invest in and so on and so forth? So because of that, my clients would say, hey, I'm from PCA. I've even spoken to 200 men at the Kenya Anglican Men's Association. Men, the f age of my father. At that time, I was, I don't know, 26, because of passion. So because of that, I'd get called, come to this group, come to this church, come to this, uh, come speak here. Wow. And as a result, I got asked to write an, uh, some articles for uh, a magazine, a finance magazine. And so I'd write articles every so often. And mom started to be on my case. You need to write a book. You need to write a book. Right, <laughs> yes. And she's a good bless mother. Bless my mom. She's a yeah. very good mother. She's, a she's good amazing. Mother. Yeah. She's the best I could have had. Yeah. So she, she insisted and pushed me. She eventually wrote hers, and I was like, oh, yeah, this thing is possible. And so I, I, I wrote a book. And I guess the book was the beginning of many things for me. Before the book, I did talk about finances, but it was just here, there, and everywhere. I guess the book. Um, put me out there. Let mm. me let me put it that way. Right. I was a closet financial advisor. Money wise, yeah, the closet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So until money wise came. Until money wise came. So now that opened up doors and, and caused you to speak to more people yes, and stuff to like that. Speak to more people and discover yourself in the process. This is this is the thing. Mm. I mean, so writing a book for me was not the process of let me tell you what you need to hear. Mm. Oh, these people. <laughs> No, it was my journey of discovery, even yeah. in the way that I managed 
and continue to manage my money. I found mm. how I'm so weak at this thing. This is why I'm having this challenge or this conflict with my husband. Oh my gosh, I have a serious weakness here. And so it, it was a process of also serious discovery of myself. Right. Yeah. Okay. And areas I need to grow in. Right. Mm. Now, I know that, uh, you know, you went through some challenges when you now got married. Mm. Okay, so here you're married. Did you get your first child immediately? So with our first child, we decided we wanted to be alone, just the two of us, for a year. And, and that wor worked out well. We decided, okay, we want to start trying. That didn't take too long. We then had a baby about a year and a half into, a year and something, about a year and a half into our marriage. Uh, and the baby came and we were so happy. And then after she was like 18 months to two years, I was like, yeah, she needs a sibling. You know, we don't want a child growing up alone. And I just started to have such a desire for a baby. And I felt, I, we need to have a baby. And then uh, what was strange was I thought, you know, it's funny when you get married, before you get married rather, you, you're like trying to avoid pregnancy like the plague. Yeah. <laughs> like, please, the worst thing that can happen to you is pregnancy. Yes. And then you get married and you think that, yeah, the first time you try by the way, it's just a deal. Mm, and it didn't baby. happen. It didn't happen. Um, wow, it was, it was very challenging. So we, keep, we kept trying, we kept trying. It was one year, it was two years, it was two years. And I'm like, oh, yeah, what's going on? Um, and that was a very challenging time for me because I wasn't able to really share what I was going through because I felt like I was being ungrateful. Ungrateful because I already was married, I already had a first child, well, I mean a second child, really, that's a bonus. I mean, what am I sharing to someone who hasn't had a husband yet? I mean, what am I even telling you how I'm struggling to have a second baby and I'm mm. crying tears? Mm. So that was difficult And this to one share. is crying to be married first. Yeah, and for me, I really was sad. Like, yeah. I'd miss a period and I'd cry. And it was, it was challenging. I'm like, why, why are you taking me through this, Lord? Well, I mean, why? So finally, I got pregnant. And I was so happy. And I was like, this is amazing. I can't wait. Yeah. And um, so, unfortunately, six, seven weeks into it, um, I had an ectopic pregnancy and I lost the pregnancy. And so that was very challenging to go mm. through. It was so hard because it was multiple, you know, for a whole month I was in and out of hospital, surgery, you know, all kinds of things. Mm. Um, and it took me time to recover. The emotional recovery took like a year. I mean, it was challenging for wow. me. And I'm um, told that it normally blocks the tubes. It does, yeah. It yeah. usually blocks the tubes or sometimes, uh, actually it does block the tube. That is what ectopic pregnancy is. Basically the pregnancy sta starts to grow in the, in the fallopian tube. Right. And it's life threatening. In fact, if you don't get it out, it can burst and the mother dies. There's no at Two story. ways. Yeah. Anyway, so fortunately they managed to get the fetus out and they saved the tube miraculously. They saved the tube. Wow. So I was able to then uh, get pregnant again after some time and we did have another child. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So do you have just the two? No, we have three. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we have three. So the third came soon after the second. Um, and he's such a blessing. Uh, we, we were kind of done with the second baby and we knew, yep, that's it. That's we're, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. we're happy. Yeah. We got the two children we wanted, but God wasn't done yet. I had a secret prayer that we would have a boy who would help to make my father-in-law, who to have an heir because he didn't have a grandson yet. Yeah. Um, yeah, from his sons. And so I thought it would be so awesome if, because he was old at the time, that if he had an heir and would be able to hold this wow. grandson before he passes on, I, I would be so happy. And I prayed to God. Didn't tell anybody about that desire. And yet I knew we were not having any more children. This second one who was coming was going to be our last. your husband, two babies Two babies finished. and done. And so when the second baby hadn't come, my prayer was that it would be a boy. Um, so it, it wasn't a boy, it was a girl. And I was like, okay, it's okay, Lord, you have your plans and I'm, and I'm fine with that. And when my baby was nine months, I discovered I was pregnant with our third baby. <laughs> Yeah, some people will be like, hey, Rina, what's <laughs> going on? <laughs> we have things called family planning. <laughs> and they funny. work. And they work. But God. Yeah, but God is amazing. Yeah, so the right. boy came. The boy came. So your father-in-law father was able to hold this baby in, in, in his, you know, and he was all there. And, you know, that they had such a connection that, and he was 98 years old. And he was, wow. he was frail at this time. He was deteriorating. The baby came and we t when we took him to, to him, 
it was amazing. It's he he it's like he woke up <laughs> wow. and had something to live for. Yeah. Really? It was the most amazing thing. Yeah. yeah. He must have been overjoyed. He was. He and was. then he died soon after? He died uh, when the baby was eight months. Really? On, actually, on the day that my baby died, uh, when my baby turned eight months, it was the day he died. What? And it's for me, it's significant because eight is actually the number of new beginnings. Right. Yeah. 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 That's amazing. Yeah. Wow. <laughs>
and I'm, wow. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. So it is said that the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the just. Mm -hmm. So should we just sit back and wait for this money? <laughs> is it coming? So first of all, <laughs> you, that thing has been removed out of context. If you read the verse from the beginning, <laughs> it says a good man yes. leaves an inheritance for his children's children. Mm -hmm. And the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. So first of all, you have to be a good man, which means what? You are a good manager of the resources, all of them. You're a good man father, a good wife, you're a good worker, you're a good manager of the money God has given you, you're a good manager of time, all right? You're a good person who is thinking about tomorrow. Mm. Now, it doesn't mean that yeah, I got saved, so now <laughs> I'm sitting. the riches are coming, we money cometh, wait. like some churches tell us to confess, <laughs> and you're sitting at home, never. Diligence is what brings wealth, the Bible says, yeah. It's about working hard. Are you a diligent person? Are you honest? Are you trustworthy? Are you faithful with what God has given you? You know, I was, I was talking to somebody this morning and telling him, there's a house I went to, and these guys were renting. And I tell you, the roof had leaked, hmm? and had been leaking because of rain or whatever it is. The walls were peeling. Mm. The paint is peeling off, but they'll not bother repair. Why? It's not their house. See, they're renting. The landlord should fix it. And you look at that house and sincerely, if I was God, would I really give them their own house? You know, Luke 16 says, if you cannot manage other people's property well, hmm. what is going to make God give you yours? You cannot be trusted you with yours. Wow. 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 Yeah. Mm. So, so, yes, you, you can't sit and the money cometh. And the money cometh. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, listen, uh, a lot of couples. Yeah. Actually, they say that the, the, um, the, the main reason why people even divorce mm -hmm. is because of money. Yeah. And there are a lot of couples who don't even talk about money. Mm -hmm. And statistics have proven mm -hmm. that a whooping 31 billion is, 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 it goes un, 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 unclaimed. Un, unclaimed. Mm -hmm. Nobody goes to claim. Could it be because that cup, maybe somebody died and had not even told the wife? That they were actually rich. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, this is an African problem. Yes, it's true. It's true. I mean, the unclaimed is, is by the way, in fact, it's not just dead people. Um, so there's two aspects to it. But let me first answer the question about um, people who don't share their wealth. It's true. I mean, it's very unfortunate, but the traditional African man feels as though if he lets his wife know how much he uh, earns, he's finished. She might kill him. Hmm? She might kill him. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know why. And, and yet, to be honest, mm. I think women add such value to their men. They do. They, the, it's the Bible. It's the Bible. He who Whoever finds, finds a, wife. a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor. favor. So they add value. Imagine they yeah. do. Yeah. I think mm -hmm. as women, we need to help our men see that. Mm. So if you're a woman and your husband does not tell you even where he works <laughs> or what his business is. <laughs> Do you know I have a relative who, at, what, at him, she had no idea what her husband does. He was in his 60s and she was not sure. She just knows he works. He's, yeah, no, not works, but he has businesses. But cannot tell you what those businesses are, what those businesses do. And where they are. And where they are. Now, as a woman, you must demonstrate to your husband and to the people around you, whether that person is your father, a brother, an, an uncle, uncle mm -hmm. that, that you are, are a person, person who is knowledgeable. And capable. And capable. Yes. It's because of just being... Pedue. Yeah, exactly. I'm married. Yeah, I'm married. I'm, fin <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> it's over, guys. It's a wrap. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> How is, how, is, how is he going to trust you? Even respect you enough to show you anything. Exactly. Yeah. So it's good to know hey, what happened today. How was work? This business deal that uh, you're chasing, did it come through? Oh my gosh, can we pray about it? How, how, you know, whatever it is, whatever it is your husband is doing, have an interest and follow up and know what's happening and give whatever insights input. you and input read about it you know read about it so that you understand right and this guy will be like by the way my wife eh? you know the men who come to me and say she is such an amazing manager mm -hmm. of our finances i make the money but she manages it 
she has access to wow. everything she manages wow. his money because mm -hmm. he knows that she will do the right thing so mm -hmm. that's it's not just that the bible has said marry this woman or the, what does it say again mm -hmm. <laughs> he who finds a wife finds a good thing yes. and obtains favor. it doesn't happen automatically right. you as a wife need to equip yourself so that indeed you you not only add favor to him but add value to him right. because these gifts that you have a gift of intuition an amazing ability to just discern that you know i know sweetie we want to do this thing but i don't know my heart the just time. Yeah. i'm not sure it's not the hour yeah yeah and for real mm. it was not the hour yeah because 99.9% .9 of the time, yeah. the women are right. And even if the man doesn't verbally admit it, yes. he'll be like, by the my wife, eh? I mm. have to tell her before I do anything. Yes, mm. it's true. Yeah. And because, yeah. So what are some of the pitfalls to avoid when it comes to finance? I think the biggest one is making sure you don't let money define who you are. Because, l let me give this with a story instead of giving theories. Two days ago, I was dropping my little baby in kindergarten. And as I was driving, I saw this amazing car. Wow, Dis the new discovery. And I looked at this car, I was like, wait, 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 wait. And then I looked at the driver. Oh, I knew him. And I was like, gosh, How I know now? this guy. Yeah. How? How now? How now? <laughs> See, we were together. Yeah. As in, we started this career. Not well, we're not in the same industry, but we started this thing together. Yeah, right. <laughs> how, how is he driving that car? And I started feeling a bit of embarrassment about the car I'm driving. Like this all happened between the time I saw that car and the time I was now, I'm not even driving into a school and I'm feeling <laughs> this car of mine, you know? And then I had to catch myself. I had to stop myself. And by the way, this thing, it's not wow. a tea. You, you, it's a process. And I had to catch myself saying, what I have and the things I'm able to experience have no reflection of the wealth I have. Mm. Wow. Man. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Because I've parked a big car or a small car or I am no walking, reflection. it yeah. is not a reflection yeah. of the wealth that I have. There are many that Poverty park is a those mindset. big cars yes. and full of debt. Uh, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you. Mm. Let me tell you the amount of debt people go into so that they are seen a certain way. To impress people who don't care. Exactly. Yeah. Is the problem. So that's my number one. That is my number one. Please, you know what your plan is. You know what God has called you. We're all walking a different path. Mm. And I'm not measuring myself against you, Pastor Kathy, because I will be doing a very serious Please mistake. Please don't try. I cannot even try. Because yes. <laughs> <laughs> you have a calling that is just yours. That's mine. And I don't want And you have yours. Me, I, I can't write mine. money wise. <laughs> <laughs> no. You know? Right. And, and there are people you will try and reach that you can no, never. Right. You'll try and say, hey, hey, let me try and do like Pastor Nani and Reverend. So and I can reach. Never. They are, God has called, called you to everyone. Exactly. You're called to some people. So take wow. time to yeah. understand, number two, what are you here for? What is your passion? What is it that you can do and even do for free? Without pay. pay. Without pay. Because God has given you an ability and a talent. You know, he says he has given you the ability, the power to create wealth. That ability is in you. It's already there. Mm. There's a talent you have that you probably just thought, Psh, you know, it's not a big yes. deal. Maybe it's an a talent in administration. You see, like now, what is that? And yet you can be such a, you just need to work on that, perfect it, perfect your craft, whatever that craft is. And you will be amazed. It will bring you before kings mm. and before great men. So wow. it's about understanding that we are all different and what is it and just doing a stock take and thinking through and understanding this is the path God has called me to. And I will live here because I have a plan. Not that you're going to live I don't know where mm. so that I look a certain way. Or take my kids to I don't know which school so that I look a certain or way. Or see a car like that and then, and then I go to DTW hey, and I need tell one. them, hey, mm? Mm. I need to be paying per month. <laughs> Meanwhile. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know this story. Stressing. Maybe his father bought for him that car. I don't know. You don't know? Mm -mm. Yeah. And I then you know. go stressing yourself. You want to be like. It's, it's, you know what it's like? Comparisons. Yeah. yeah. It's like running. I, I'm a, I, I like to run. It's like Me running. Me too. Oh, do you? I do. I, I love should, running. We should run together. <laughs> By and the way, the thing I, used with to, I used to be the best in school. For real? Yeah, absolutely. Hi. Nobody could catch me. When I put my hands like this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even oh, joking. Oh, you're amazing. Yeah. yeah you yeah. know? <laughs> you, if you go running and you're like at Karura, and there are guys you see running and now pace, eh? Yeah? You wonder. Ah. And you start feeling, you just feel pressure suddenly inside of you mm. as they're running. And you're like, wait, wait, wait. I need to be serious about my running and run faster. Yet you have no idea what time that guy came. 
maybe he's running five kilometers, you're running 20. You maybe no you started 20 years ago, you just... You, you just started? Mm. Ah, ah, ah. This life is about taking <laughs> your pace, knowing where you're going and who you are. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Nowadays, people love, love quick fixes. Yeah. Pyramid schemes and what <laughs> men are making money now. Yeah. What would you advise about that? The millennials, eh? <laughs> we want it now. Yeah. What would you advise about that financially? <sighs> wow. This one. Okay, so I guess one of the things is that wealth is about getting an income. And an income of whatever amount. It doesn't matter whether you earn 15,000 a month or a million. It's about an income of whatever amount plus time plus discipline. So mm. the other thing is, so, yeah. so, so what that means is if I get money, you see, we both earn different things. But the amount you keep after you've all your expenses and the amount I keep after all my expenses can be the same. Do you know that? Because yes. of your lifestyle and my lifestyle. It's true. Wow. It's not about how much you earn. Wow. It's about how much you keep. It's about how much you keep. Now, somebody who sees an opportunity and says, eh, 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 eh. I need to enter this one because I'll earn 20% per month. Mm. Now, the thing about investments is, so first of all, let me just describe. An investment is something that you put your money into, or, uh, you know, to get an asset that will bring an income or that the asset will grow in value. Right. That's an investment. However, this investment has to compensate you for a couple of things. One, it must compensate you for time and the time value of money. So 100 bob today is not the same as 100 bob a year from now. Why? Because of the opportunity you have to earn an interest on that money. The reverse of that is the second thing, which is inflation. Inflation is the general rise in prices of goods and services, which means if I have 100 bob today and inflation is 7%, a year from now, the 100 bob will not be able to afford me the same things it can afford me now. So my investment must be able to cater from inflation, which means if I'm investing, the return I earn must be more than that 7% mm. or whatever inflation is at the time. The last thing is risk that you must think about when you invest. It's not just looking at return. Right. Every time you hear return that is higher than what is normal, the risk is highest. In, yeah, highest. Basically, if you decide to invest in something because it's giving you 20% per month, mm. be ready to lose all of your money. So invest only that which you are willing to lose. Because until you give me 20,000 and in a few days I can give you 60,000, yeah. where did the 40 come from? Exactly. Where did it you come from? And what <laughs> business are you doing to help that money grow right. to become that? So to those are things that. you need to and ask yourself. And to become yourself. that, Quickly. Exactly. So some of the things you need to look at is, okay, so what are they doing with my money? Where are they investing it? Where, how, how, okay, so what are they buying? Oh, and then what are they selling? And what return are they making? And how are they are able to afford to pay me 100%? Kwani, what are they earning? Because, and then why do they need my money? Why are they, they, are they feel so need, they need to help me? Mm. Do they need to help me? Mm. Or are they about making themselves rich? So you need to be careful. So anytime you hear there's an investment and it's giving a return and you hear the return, the next thing you need to ask yourself is what is the risk I am going to incur by getting into this investment? Mm. And you need to assess. And if you're unable to, you must talk to somebody in your circles who is um, able to break it down and at least understand and explain whether this is a good investment or not. It, you must do that. What's the best lesson you've learned where wealth and finance is concerned? I think it's, it's just that, that wealth creation is a process. It is a process and it is not magical. It's about me spending time becoming financially literate and it's a continuous process. Right now, I'm in, the, I'm in the process of completely and fully trying to understand this business of cryptocurrencies. W what are they? What's blockchain? How is it gonna change my life? Because the world is changing. I can't just say, yeah, we used to invest in treasury bonds and I just say, me, I just do treasury bonds. No, I am still learning even now and I will continue to learn all the different options that are available. Okay, so there's real estate. How does real estate work? You need to understand how these things work. The second thing for me is I, the second lesson is I have to take responsibility as Rina.
for my wealth creation. No uncle, no investment banker, mm -hmm. no analyst. Clap. That's the part. Mm -hmm. That's powerful. Yeah. It's going no, to make me rich. really powerful. So I have take to take responsibility. responsibility. What does that mean? I have to take time to understand this investment I am investing in. It's not that you work for people like Rina to tell me, do I get in or out? Mm -mm. I need to understand why I have bought. When am I going to sell? Keep track. Let me tell you, I have, I guess because of being in this business and the desire that I have, I've studied so many wealthy people in mm. my life. Mm. Okay? Wow. And they work hard to, to understand what they're investing in. They ask serious questions. In fact, even my clients, even my clients, I can't just pick up the phone and call, and I call a high net worth client and tell them buy X. They never say, where do I send the money? Never, ever. It's Why should questions I? from here to yeah. tomorrow. Mm. What are they doing? What are, the what are the cash flows? What are the and this guy is in IT, not in finance. So if you want to be wealthy, you must invest in growing your financial IQ. There's no two ways about it. I know sometimes it can feel a bit overwhelming, a bit daunting. You know, you're a marketer. And so this thing is like, oh gosh, I hear money or wealth and savings and I just feel tired. You have to change your mindset. Yeah, if you want to accomplish the things God has for you. Mm. Imagine we have to move from seeing finances and wealth creation as a giant and just pray and ask God, you know, where do I start? And there's resources out there that will help you learn. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So somebody must start where they are. Start where you are. And, and that's another one. Oh my God. Right. That's a big lesson. Yeah. Do you know there's something called the power of compounding? I have to tell this one. There's something called the power of compounding. And what that means is it's just interest earning on interest. Okay. So do you know that even if you save a thousand shillings a month, in 20 years you will be a multimillionaire? Mm. Mm. Yeah. Earning only 10% per annum. Just a th let me tell you, I said wealth is equal to income of whatever amount yeah. plus discipline plus time. And so you just have to be consistent. You make sure you leave that money there and you just continue to turn it over. This one has matured, put it in something else. It has matured, continue putting in the thousand, the thousand, the thousand, the thousand. And you'll be amazed. I have a friend today and I'd be happy to introduce you to her so she can come to this show. She has never earned more than 45,000 shillings in her life. Never. She's a multi-millionaire. Her assets are worth like hundreds of millions. What are you saying? I am telling you. Because of this thousand thing? What she did? <laughs> we are putting a thousand aside. She wasn't putting a thousand. She what? put what she had. Sometimes it was 3,000. Sometimes it was 20. Sometimes it was less. But she was consistent about it. And not just consistent about it. She was a little aggressive about it. And she said, wherever I can find land, I can afford even for 50,000. And not only that, she would then go to those people and say, I know your land is going to cost me in totality 200,000. I don't have 200,000. But she, and she would pray and tell God, please give me opportunities and show me where they are and give me favor with those people who are selling. She went on Thika Road, Thika Road, several years ago to buy a quarter. Those ladies who were selling land there, the owners of the, of the piece of land that she was selling, she went to them and said, I can't afford to pay you the amount of money you're asking for but I can pay you consistently every month 20,000 shillings for the next, I don't remember how many years it was. You know, they looked at her and they saw how genuine she was. They asked for a few documentation. They did a bit of due diligence on her and they so, said yes. What? Yeah. It's about trying. You, you, you know, you never know until you, you try. You try. Wow. You know, you just never know. And yeah. there's nothing wrong with asking. N nothing wrong. That's what I learned from yeah. her. Yeah. I learned from her first pray. Number two, look for opportunities. And number three, you must be consistent with what you invest. And just ask. Yes, they're selling it for a million and you don't have it. Ask. Just ask. Can I, can I pay this slowly way? this way? This yeah. is what I have. How do we do? I can write standing orders. I mean, uh, post data checks or whatever it is. And we can structure it in a way that works. And you will be surprised how, what favor you can receive. Hmm. So don't sit out thinking, I, I don't have a million. Oh, that investment can't work. Start where you are with what you have. There's opportunities where she you are. She has never earned more than 45. She has never ever ever. In fact, she runs a children's what? home. She runs a children's home and she doesn't draw a salary from that children's home. Her income comes from her investments. She has rental properties and if she needs a lot of money, she'll sell a piece of land somewhere. What? Mm. Wow. 
So we need to really, really think about investing. Is yes. what you're telling us. I think, us. yes, you must think about, first of all, saving. First of all, putting aside that money. And then, obviously, it's not just putting it aside. It has to earn money. Because guess what? If we just rely on our income, we will retire poor. Do you know that 80% of Kenyans retire poor when they retire? Why? 80. Because they're just used to, they get a salary, 80%. That's a statistic. They it's so it. sad. You get a salary, you spend it, you live in Karen, you live, I don't know where, you pay a huge rent, you're paying mortgage for the 20, 30, 20 years or 15 years, whatever the mortgage period is. Mm. Then you send your children to schools that are so expensive and you're paying all these bills. It is said that Africa is full of consumers. Yes, it That is. we are consumers. Mm. Do you know what is so sad? Right. In 2016, and this statistic has now changed, unfortunately I don't have the current one. The Kenya National Bureau of Statistics showed that Kenyans today are living on 102% of their income which means they're in perpetual state of debt. We're in a crisis, Pastor 102. Kathy. Are you serious? I am telling you. And unfortunately, it was higher. So the previous year, no, previous five years before that, 2010, mm. we were saving 5% on average. So, okay, averages are not very useful, but I mean, it's, it's, it's helpful to kind of see, based on income, we were at least able to save 5%. Five years later, Wow. We were living on 102% of our income. So I think we are in a crisis, if you ask me, if we want our nation to grow and to prosper, for us to finance the projects that, that we need to get done, build railways and build airports and build things and have trade thrive and have businesses able to borrow. If anybody here has an SME, they understand how challenging it is to get credit mm. in this part of the world. Mm. It's very challenging because people want people who, I mean, the institutions want people who are able to pay back and right. who have uh, security and that sort of thing. But if we are able to all create wealth and we have a savings culture as a nation, mm. there will be money available for people to borrow and do what they great need to things, do. what right. they need to do, you yeah. know, finance their businesses and grow them and mm. we will thrive. Wow. But for as long as we're not, we're just here, you mm. know, mm. about my image. Yeah. And my image, mm. yeah. what yes. people think. Mm. Yeah. Oh, we God help us. <laughs> <laughs> Rina, what's your parting shot? Oh, I think my parting shot is it doesn't matter where you are. Oh my gosh, those are sad faces. <laughs> Don't be sad. <laughs> it doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter where you are, even if you're in debt right now. It doesn't matter. I think it just, you just need to make a decision. You just need to make a decision today. I want my life to change. Mm. And I want to live the life that God has called me to do and to accomplish the purposes that he has set for me before time to do and to be successful at that. So number one, be a good manager of what God has placed in your hands. If you right. work for somebody, please, be faithful. Do a good job and be yeah. faithful. Give a hundred and ten percent, and you'll be amazed what will come. Opportunities will open up. In fact, even within your workplace, opportunities will it's open true. up. Don't start trying to do. I don't know which side hustle there. Another one here and another one here. You're eating into your employer's time. Give your time there fully and give it well. And even there within your employer's um, workplace, you can actually find additional work. And you can even be an, a partner with your employer, by the way, if you didn't know. Mm. It's called an intrapreneur. Wow. Now, even if you're in debt, you know, there's ways to get out of debt. And actually, my book even has steps on, on how, how to get, to out, of get out of debt wow. systematically yeah. and easily. Mm. Um, and so that would be it. You, it doesn't matter where you start, where you are now. You, all you need to do is make a decision and commit to the process. Mm. And God is amazing. He wow. can turn things around. Within two years, you're somebody else completely if you remain consistent. Wow. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Wow. And Rina has given a gift to two people. Yes. So you know what? If you look under your seat somewhere, two people will find that gift. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> And I have one for you so, too. Oh wow, you do! I have do? one for you too. Oh, thank you. You oh, are part of the journey. You have no idea, but you are part of this journey. Really? Yeah. When you came, tell us about it. When you came with your mom? Yes. Yeah. I came with my mom. Okay. I remember. We, now we can say who your mom is. <laughs> <laughs> Jenny Karina. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. That's the mom. You came with her, and then she, you were like, oh. She, 
So she, she called us up. She loves to embarrass us. Yeah. So she called us. We just came to just listen at yeah. Daughters of Zion. And she called us up on stage and asked us to introduce ourselves. I can tell you, at that time, I had just started writing. And it was, um, you know, I had an infant in my house at that time. Yeah. And I was really struggling with writing. But I was like, I'm going to finish this book. And so for whatever reason, I just opened my mouth and blurted, Pastor Kathy, I'm writing a book. I'm going to finish it. And you'll give me an opportunity to come to your church and speak Can about you it. <laughs> and here you are. And here I am. With so the book. You. Yes. Wow. <laughs> come on, give it up for her. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Create, grow, and preserve wealth. Yeah. Money Wise by Rina Karina Hicks. Oh, this is beautiful. Where can we get it? So at the moment, you can get it at Textbook Center. Textbook Center? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they do run out. So if they do run out, um, mymook.com. Mymook.com is somewhere else you can get the book. Okay. And the other place is at FIDA Investment Bank on, at Windsor House. Uh, Windsor House. Windsor House. FIDA in Investment. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. Well done. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. You can't go wrong. When you know something about finances, everybody wants to learn, isn't yeah. it? We yeah. all want to know. May God yeah. bless you. Thank, Thank you. you for coming. Oh, it's a pleasure. Yes. I can't believe the time is up already. I know. It's, it's like it was over. over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A few minutes ago. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching. May the good Lord bless you. Please get financially stable. And may God bless you as he gives you wisdom on money. Have yourself a most wonderful week. Mm. Yeah. Mm. An open heaven is the unhindered manifestation of all that heaven is. Under an open heaven, natural laws are superseded by the power of God as divinity interrupts uh, humanity. Poverty, sickness, and disease, uh, human degradation uh, are driven back by the power of God. I don't know who I'm preaching to today, but the work of your hands shall be blessed. I break the spirit of poverty. I break the spirit of begging and borrowing. I take authority over that spirit that has held you down and told you are never rising. I stand as a man of God to say, the work of your hands is blessed. Whatever you do is blessed. I break the spirit of laziness. You are not broke. You are not lazy. You are ahead and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. And the heavens are open over your head. Lift up your voice and give God a praise for 30 seconds.